Hey everybody, hope you're doing well. I was just thinking today about the MBTI uh, and uh, system and the INFJs and pertaining to the INFJ personality type. I was watching a bunch of videos also that were talking about like our inferior SE function extroverted sensing and uh, it was interesting to me because they seem they seem to talk about it or refer to it as like mostly like a, a weakness you know and uh, not really well when I was I started to try and recollect moments of which I had experienced situations in that state of mind. And yeah, while the way I can explain it is a lot of the time I am stuck up in my own thoughts and my brain and whatnot and my, and I'm dreaming and thinking about my future and starting a business and implementing certain like uh, social standards in in that company or organization and <clears throat> I was thinking that in my past like when it'll happen to me something that like if they think that we're quite klutzy um, or we could be perceived that way because well like what some things that happened to me like bashing my fingers in between two solid objects uh, because you're just not thinking about the action that you're doing and that happens to me more often than the average bear <laughs> So, yeah, in that aspect, yes, it is, it it can be seen as a, a form of weakness, I suppose. But if you <clears throat> take into consideration that because we're deprived of that aspect of life by our own cognitive functions, it's not, we're deprived of it, we, we still live in the sensing world obviously but but we're not we we are more often than not just thinking about something if i see something a shirt with a phrase on it i go into a tangent of thought uh, and <laughs> trying to figure out some deeper meaning behind what it is and the person who's wearing it and what that says about them and you know what color is it uh what is the person actually trying to convey all this you know junk it can that type of deciphering can occur when looking at an inanimate object even but what i'm trying to get at here is that when we do pop into the reality of any situation like when i'm if if i feel that something is dangerous or precarious like a social situation or um you know, someone someone is in need of physical aid at the moment, or someone is, you know, uh, there's a threat around. Like, like when I was at my grandma's house, was babysitting her house and her dog uh, over the weekend uh, a few years ago. Uh, she lives out in the country. And we live in Wisconsin. And there's the a bear was outside, a black bear, and and when in those situations, it become you become hypersensitive, hyper aware, like you're supposed to. You get the adrenaline rush, like all humans. So, but I guess it the, 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 this doesn't really that story doesn't help me exemplify what I'm trying to say at all, or but. Anyways, before I get too sidetracked, like, 
when you like you're going into a social situation or you let's just say you're in a busy environment I believe that because it's our weakest function when we actually utilize it when we allow ourselves to be in that train of thought that we can be hypersensitive to details and the only reason I will say that is because um, more often than not, when I am paying attention in a certain situation, I will notice things before most other people around me notice things. And it doesn't have to pertain to humans, but it it happens observing other people as well. Like I will pick up on those cues way faster, obviously, than most people around me too. But But it can be anything, really. And my theory on it is that we as INFJs, because we're deprived of it, that when we actually delve into it, each reaction to each thing that we see gives us a more vivid reaction and in doing so strikes our psyche harder, in a sense. <laughs> and in doing that it makes us remember or recollect or perceive something that's right in front of us but and this is kind of just a rough draft of the thought because i it just manifests itself in me today came to me and i was thinking about it while i was sitting in the parking lot waiting for my brother to get done with work i just thought it was very interesting and i probably talk about it again eventually but i have to figure out I have to compose this a little better next time. I'm just uh, doing the best I can on a whim. I don't really feel like organizing things at the moment. <laughs> Please forgive me for that. But uh, there was another thing I wanted to mention and now I've totally forgot about it. It was a... about pertaining to INFJ again. But it wasn't about the SE. Oh, it was, uh, there's a small interjection I wanted to make about... Uh, uh, I, I was watching, I've been watching a lot of INFJ-related videos, and I've noticed a few of them wearing stripes. And I was striped shirts. I was wondering if that's if that's a common <laughs> a common interest like in style if they like stripes more than a lot of patterns because I like stripes a lot a lot a lot it's my favorite if if I don't wear a lot of them but I I find it very aesthetically pleasing and I think and well I I don't know I was just wondering maybe it pertains to that you know each stripe is a never ending line maybe that in itself is like pseudo divine in our eyes subconsciously because it's something we could never get to the bottom of but i don't know a representation of something we could never get to the bottom of or it's an infinite and you could delve into it and never get anywhere like other things that we find very interesting, or at least I do. Like theology, religion in general, uh, spirituality, anything that has to do with, and uh, anything that has to do with purpose, the universe, as far as we know, it's it reaches us into infinity which i don't know if i believe that or not but <laughs> still extremely interesting and and wondrous for me oh the other thing that i wanted to talk about is infj rage because when i was growing up i had a huge problem with anger i even got arrested one time because as a result of my actions because of my my rage 
It's not, and I've heard it explained a few times. Some of the words used were like explosive, conflagration. Um, and I can completely agree with that. 100% it explains the phenomenon for me. And um, one thing, though, that they were saying is like some of them, you know, they can keep their composure and they will say mean things that will hurt. They will cut so deep because whatever. Not disrespecting that person's opinion, but when I get mad after being an INFJ throughout the day or years or whatever, and you're just, you're, you're allowing, you, you, you are here to help others. That's like, I know yeah, everyone says they, they want to help others, but an INFJ's life revolves around how do I make that person's life more comfortable or in the present moment, do they need help? And they, we feel compelled to do so. And oh man, I lost my train of thought. You guys are making me nervous. <laughs> um, and so you know, you pent up all that real, your real emotion, of which they say we are a little disconnected from. Like our FE helps us find our true feelings through other people's interactions with us. At least that's how I understand they're, they're explaining it. Well, we do, we hold in animosity, or at least I do, because someone can do something that others would be really upset about, or it would just piss someone off. <laughs> and they, if they do that to me, it's always just like, oh, that's all right. Don't worry about it. Oh, don't worry about it. Oh, you're fine. You're fine. That's fine. You know, it's it's never like, what are you doing? Or uh, what else? What else do they? What else? What other? Hmm. There would other people might react quite negatively. Maybe even just stare at the person intently with intent anger, but if it happens to me, someone makes a mistake. That's how I. Usually, the way I deal with how I look at the world, right? So if someone does something that would annoy someone else, it's, I see it as a given. Like, why? Of course they're going to make a mistake. It's inevitable, you know? And I can't expect others to feel the same way I do, to, to think about how I'm feeling about what they're doing. That's not, that's no, not everybody does that. So it's just, um, we pent it up inside. We do feel those things, but it, it seems irrelevant at the time. And then eventually something happens. Someone you care about hurts you or does, it actually does something that can hurt you emotionally. And when I snap, it's, I can't speak. I don't have it in me to speak. I cannot. I would never be able to. It's instant anger and I start breaking things. And I try to stay away from that. I've learned how to avoid those situations where, like, if someone makes me angry, if someone is like a friend of mine or a family member and they hurt me, I will just... I will remove myself from the situation. And in other situations, like someone disrespecting someone in front of me or, you know, on the cusp of trying to get into an altercation with it, or an individual who's minding their own business, it would, that's when it threatens to arise. And in some cases, I think that it would be acceptable morally in my own opinion for that rage to come out if you're going to be saving someone or 
preventing a an atrocity from happening then yes it's a gift but i don't uh i feel like people are kind of sugarcoating that heightened anger or they're not experiencing it the same way i am which is understandable too we're all different people no matter what personality type or cognitive functions we have but that's the other thing too is like they say that inferior se it causes us to overindulge and and i can fully attest to that and it's something it's probably the thing that i struggle with most on a day-to-day -day basis too much food um sexual <laughs> sexual interactions that are not desirable for me but like i have every urge to pursue them in the meantime and then after i'm like what the hell am i doing <laughs> and that's happened to me enough and it's frustrating it's because it's you know other people they'll say like all oh, males are all like that but it's diff it's different i feel like It's hard to control myself around food or easy openings into sexual interactions. So, yeah, I think that, and I'm fighting it. I, I mean, within a year here, for a year I've been fighting both of those and succeeding most often. The food has been catching up on me, though. I've gained at least 40 pounds in the last probably five months. So I, I need to start cracking down on that again. But, yeah. I would just say, don't be shy with your experiences. At least the community that is listening to you as INFJs or ISN, or people who are interested in studying or um, looking deeper into the INFJ personality type or psyche, they need the raw data. And if we are holding back, they're not going to understand us as well as we would like them to. But those are the biggest problems in my life when it comes to things that I find unacceptable completely. Totally goes against my own, my own moral code. And it leaves me feeling empty and disgusted with myself. And then you hurt other people's feelings by you know the door slam because that can happen to somebody that you're not looking to have a relationship with either they didn't do anything wrong you did what was wrong and now you're trying to leave their life before you make it too much worse and that happens to me too often so but try to go on a lighter note here for a second if I can think of something. I do want, I want some more subjects to speak about. I'm still studying up on MBTI personalities. And I would like to be able to type people by looking at them and observing them for, you know, about five minutes or so. Once I get my skills to that level, then I'll probably move on to something else. And I'll store it away for future reference and possibly use it in a situation that calls for such things, such information. But that's the other thing I was thinking about. Everybody's always talking about how, like the counselor, they're calling us the counselors. <laughs> uh, and I think that's, it makes sense, yeah. We do make good counselors, um, but I think there's a misperception here. At least in my case, it's it. It's not only the INFJ in this <laughs> doesn't only manifest itself through like speaking, social interactions, right? It's like. Uh, 
I would, if I was to name what we are, and I'll probably come up with a name for every one of the types <laughs> eventually and tell you guys, but if I was to name the INFJ, it would be the bearer because we bear other people's problems for them. We, sometimes it's not successful, but we try to. Every fiber in our body wants to. That's what we're made for. We're there to take their pain away and push them in a better direction. And they call that, you know, you could call it counseling, but it's not only that. We would make great heroes as well. If they say that, there's other ones that they call the adventure and all this stuff, but there's not many more things. I mean, what we do, if you saw someone dying or in a situation where they were, they were going to die, but you could save them if you put yourself in grave danger, it would be in the INF, INFJ's nature to interject. At least for me, it would be, it wouldn't matter who you are. I wouldn't need to know you. If I was to die saving you, I would think that was worth it. I, because that FE, it's, it's telling you, you can't allow that person to feel like that or to suffer that. But yeah, that's my thoughts. That's my skimming off the top of my head thoughts on the matter. It's a, we can we can be and do it's not just this cloudy um what do you call it analytical uh beautiful mosaic of a mind that's going on in an INFJ we are can we are pulled towards action in helping other people and creatures who are in need and that can put us in danger and it I'm sure has others. I, I'm, I've gotten in, I put myself in danger plenty of times for other people. But, yeah, it's just interesting to think about. But yeah, uh, I hope you guys have a good rest of your night. Uh, thanks for listening if you did. I hope you can gain some insight into the INFJ or an INFJ who doesn't really know what the heck he's talking about yet. Um, but on the subject matter, at least, and, uh, yeah, have a good one. Bye-bye.